Hey guys, so I'm back with another smart home video. So this one is a tutorial video and we are going to be looking at getting scripted installed uh, using Docker. So I noticed there aren't very many videos um, about this, so I thought I'd uh, go ahead and make one myself. So we're going to be, as I say, using Docker for this, and this is running on a Linux, uh, Ubuntu Linux server uh, where I've got my Docker installed. And we're going to be using Portainer. Um, nice GUI saves um, having to do any sort of complicated terminal stuff. I mean, you're welcome to do that. I know there is a guide on the scripted uh, GitHub for local installation. Um, and there's a video for that that I did initially reference. Um, so I'll try and remember to put that in the in the show notes at the bottom. But as I say, we're gonna be using Portainer um, just because it's a little bit easier. Um, and it's just easier running it in Docker, I think. You can, you can make sure that you can update it easier. You can just pull down a new image whenever you need to. You don't have to worry about disk space and all that sort of thing. So that's, uh, that's the reasoning behind it. So I recently got a Ring doorbell, the wired one, um, and obviously it works great, but I want to get it into HomeKit. And it seems like the best solution at the moment. Um, I got the Ring doorbell for £40 uh, here in the UK, so I'm not sure what that is at the moment, probably $50, $60, something like that. And the plug-in uh, transformer, plug-in adapter, so that I can just plug it into a standard UK plug that I've got on the other side of the wall and I don't have to worry about changing batteries, I don't have to worry about anything like that. So it's great, you know, the quality is really good, it, it works great, but I want it in HomeKit. And unless I want to start spending, you know, 150, 200, 250 pounds by the time I've bought, for example, a circle doorbell, Logitech circle doorbell, I'd have to then get it imported. Same with the new Belkin doorbell. Um, I'd have to get that imported because they don't sell those in the UK. The only options we have in the UK are the Natatmo doorbell, which is a good choice, I think, but you still don't get HomeKit Secure Video and they've been going on that they're gonna support it for God knows how long, and it still hasn't happened. So I thought I'd just, as an entry into the smart doorbell, uh, seen that the Ring doorbell was a cheap way of getting in um, and I know there is a Homebridge plugin for this um, which you know people use and is, is, is a great plugin especially if you've got Ring alarms and other cameras and that sort of thing but if you want the HomeKit secure video and activity zones uh, face recognition all that sort of stuff um, then script is what you're going to want to use so to actually deploy scripted. Um, here you can see my Portainer. This is a fresh uh, Ubuntu Linux server with Portainer. If you guys want a video on how to install Portainer, um, how to install the server, that sort of thing, just let me know in the comments and I'll put together a video for that. Um, but this video sort of assumes that that already exists. So as I say, there's not much going on, but I'm going to go to containers and then add container. So what we're going to want to do is uh, deploy the scripted Docker image. So easiest way to do this um, is if you Google uh, scripted and then you'll see there's a Docker image page, I'll put all these in the uh, description. So all we need is this bit, the name of the image. So I'll copy that and put that in the image uh, box. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it scripted. I can spell. So we've got a name, the Docker Hub, the name of the image, always pull the image. So this means if you deploy, if you redeploy the container, it will pull the newest image, which obviously you want if you're going to do updates and things like that. Publish all exposed network ports, we'll leave that 
leave that as it is, leave this as it is, access control, I just leave this as it is. So the things that you want to come down and check are under network, we want to change this to host, and in restart policy you want to change it to unless stopped. So if you stop the container for some reason, obviously you don't want it to restart, but if say the VM restarts or, or the, the, the um, Docker container crashes for some reason, it will automatically restart for you. And that's all we need to do. So we've got our restart policy set, we've got our network set, we've got the name in there for the actual image, and we've got a name for the container. So what I will do is click deploy. Now it will take a bit of time. It didn't take long for me because I've already done this once to check that it worked. So I already had the image downloaded, so it didn't have to re-download the image. All it had to do was deploy a container. When you go through this, it will take a couple of minutes, depending on your internet connection, to actually pull down that image. Um, but it, as I say, only has to do that once, and then when there's a newer version, it will pull down that image. So scripted is downloaded and is running. So now in a browser, I can go to the, if I can type properly, I can go to the IP that I've given it, which is dot seven, and we want to go 10443, which is the port. As you can see, I've done this before. That's why there's a million of them in the history. Hit enter on that. You'll get a security warning because it's a um, secure site but there's no certificate for it, so we'll just accept that risk. Username, I'm just gonna call it admin, and I'll set a password, log in, save that. So, we are logged in to the scripted dashboard, so there's not gonna be anything here because we haven't done anything. So, it doesn't really matter which way around you do this, I'm gonna just do it whichever way I, I sort of think at the time. So you can either click in, click plugins and click install, or you can just click install plugins here on the dashboard. So I'm just gonna click install plugins. And uh, we're gonna install the ring plugin. So we'll hit install on that one. And there we go. Wait for that to load. So there we go. So I'm gonna just log in. So this is obviously saved because I've done this a million times. So I'll put that in there, put my password in there. It's gonna send me a code to log in. Put that in there, click accept. And there we go, front door has appeared. So that's how you know that the credentials have, have been accepted because the device appears here. So if I click on that, you get a nice preview of the image. So there's my doorbell and there's the integrations and extensions. So you'll notice that HomeKit isn't one of them. So to fix that, we go back to plugins, install plugin, search for HomeKit, install that one. So that installs HomeKit, and as you can see, it's, it's ticked it automatically. I'm not sure if that will be the case for everyone, or if that's because I've done it before, but if not, then obviously just tick against the items that you want to be exposed to HomeKit. And then if we go back to my devices and we go back to front door, as you can see now there's a HomeKit tick. I'm gonna turn off web RTC because it doesn't do anything. Um, now I've got a wired doorbell so I don't have to worry about battery life so for me I'm going to go to the settings of the rebroadcast plugin this was unticked um, originally
region name, it must be reusing the config from before. So I tick the rebroadcast plugin. If I look in the console, that all looks fine. So if I go back to HomeKit, then you can see, as I say, there's the doorbell there, there's your pairing code. So what we'll do now is go over to my phone and we will pair this up. So here we go in uh, the home app and what we need to do is go to the console of the HomeKit plugin which gives you your QR code. So we'll do add accessory, I'll scan the code, add to home. You'll get this uncertified accessory message because it's not a certified HomeKit accessory. I'll click add anyway, wait for it to connect. So the bridge location, the actual physical bridge is in my office, so I'll put that in there. Give it a name, I'll just change that to scripted. And it's added the bridge. It's detected the front door button. Um, I don't actually configure the button in HomeKit because it's, it's uh, you could, I guess, so that it will turn a light on or whatever, but I don't do that. So I'll just hit continue. The button's in the front garden because it's the front door, we'll call it front door. Um, here's where you can set your streaming options. I'll just leave them as default for now. Home pods to chime. We want the home pods to chime with the doorbell. Hit done. And there we go. So now, if I scroll down and click on front door, there's the stream. So we've got the push to talk, a live view. I can go into the settings as normal, shows me where it is, automations. Again, there's your recording options, face recognition, so I, I've got that turned on. Camera status light um, is in there. And if we go into notifications, I can obviously turn them on, um, set to what I want to record stuff to record, so say packages and people. Do I want the doorbell chimes and all those standard notifications that you get with uh, HomeKit secure video cameras? So if I go recording options, change these to stream and allow recording. And you want those ones. And then I can obviously set an activity zone in the same way that you would with a standard HomeKit secure video camera. So you can move this around, do what you want with it. Hit done on that. And there we go. So I can come off it. And because I've got that rebroadcast plugin turned on, you get that instant uh, loading of the view, which obviously is what you want. And there we go. So that's it all done. Um, if I press the doorbell, I get the HomePod chime. Um, I don't get the facial recognition yet because I haven't had enough people come to the door for it to figure that out. Um, but I get my HomePods to chime when somebody presses the doorbell. Um, as you can see there, I just got the, the, the notification because I enabled recording. Um, and there we go, it's all done. So I hope you found this useful. Um, let me know what you think uh, in the comments. Got any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. Um, it's It's fairly straightforward. I think once you get going, I was fairly hesitant to start with, but once you get going, I think it works pretty well. As I say, one thing to bear in mind is that if you've got a battery camera, um, I would go to your device and I would turn off the rebroadcast um, because what that does is maintains the stream so that you get that instant connection, which obviously is no good if you've got a battery camera because you'll, uh, you'll drain the battery. So that only works because I've got a hardwired camera. So just something to bear in mind. 
But yeah, I think that's going to do it for today. Um, as I say, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like if you did. Um, leave any comments you've got below. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.